What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Don't forget to put your words in. Uh, uh, pardon me. Uh, pardon me. Uh, would you mind taking hold of these, please? Well, yes, ma'am. One Hello, my name is Richard Kent. Today I want to talk about the second law of thermodynamics. This uneducated creationist used to claim, and I suspect still claims, that dinosaurs used to breathe fire out of their nostrils. He is now going to lecture us on the second law of thermodynamics. I'm sure it's just going to be a bundle of kicks and everybody's going to learn a whole lot. <laughs> Let's go see. I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's a really important law. Therefore, a creationist who believes Earth is 6,000 years old or less is going to tell us about it. Uh, the second law of thermodynamics talks about entropy. And I'm going to explain entropy very simply and then try and explain in more complex detail exactly what we're talking about. Translation. He is going to lie about it and then he is going to lie more about it. Basically, if I have a hot cup of tea in my hand, after half an hour, I end up with a cold cup of tea. Ends up with a cold, furious thinking, furious thinking, furious thinking, cup of tea. Oy vey. What's happened is the tea has become cold and the room has become slightly hotter. And Leon's getting larger. Uh, entropy is uh, talking about the uh, increasing disorder in a system. No, it applies to a closed system, an ideal environment. In non-closed environments such as Earth and the biosphere and the hydrosphere and the atmosphere here on Earth, those are all open subsystems. Let's go see where this clown is going with this. Um, let's take the sun as an example. Uh, in the sun, you've heard me talk about the sun many, many times on purpose, because the sun is the, is the source of all the energy in our solar system. No, it is not. And within the sun, every minute, sorry, every second, uh, 600 million tons of hydrogen are converted into helium every second except for four tons which convert into light and heat and energy. So actually all the time the Sun is getting slightly smaller. Now in billions of years time, which we're not going to see because Jesus Christ is going to come back. I'm sorry, who's coming back? Billions of years? Huh? By the way, the sun is probably at least 4.55 billion years old already. First, um, in theory, the sun would burn out completely. And that's called entropy. Gosh, yet another creationist who thinks the sun is burning shit. Meanwhile, the sun is almost halfway through its lifetime. It is already about 4.55 billion years old. It has another 6 billion or so to go before enough of its hydrogen is fused into heavier elements. It will then expand. It will then cool because as a gas, it will cool because gases cool when they expand. It will also stay really, really warm. Because the amount of energy and uh, available energy in the hydrogen atoms in the sun is decreasing all the time, so eventually we end up with heat death. In roughly six billion years. I would not worry about it personally. Now this doesn't just apply to heat and energy, it applies to all systems. I'll give you another simple example. I have a very messy study and in my very messy study there are lots of drawers and, uh, and lots of different places I put things and every three months they get very, very messy and I have to tidy that up. And it's because of entropy. Increasing disorder in Richard Kent's study. Okay, well this is just sad and pathetic. Uh, you have my sympathy, you have my compassion, you have my pity, but why complain to us? 
there's increasing disorder in our own bodies. I used to be able to run quite a reasonable marathon, but I can't do it anymore. I can't run a reasonable marathon because of entropy in my own body. The last of anything we want to hear, and certainly what I don't want to hear, is any processes going on in this clown's body. All of us are getting older. We're not getting better. We're actually getting worse. We're getting older because our, our, our whole body systems are winding down. Therefore, God did it. This is his argument. Everything is going to hell, and God is responsible. That's his argument. I, I'm just sure of it. He's going to throw in a God and he goes, oh, God's responsible for you rocking slowly as age overcomes you. His God is doing that to us. Gosh, what a really sweet God this guy has. Now, what do the evolutionists teach? Wait a minute. Um, evolutionists? I thought we were talking cosmology. I thought we were talking thermodynamics. Now we're talking biology? Huh? Why change the subject? They teach something completely different. No. They teach that 13.8 billion years ago there was a big bang. No. Evolutionists do not teach there was a big bang. You're talking cosmology, not biology. Astrophysicists, cosmophysicists teach that there was a Big Bang. Evolutionists do not. And something which arose by chance called a singularity. No, no astrophysicists think that the singularity was caused by chance. What astrophysicists have concluded is that it is extremely likely we will never know what caused the Big Bang. Exploded and caused a highly ordered system. No, it did the opposite. When the universe was the singularity, whatever the hell that was, it was in hyper-ordered stasis. Something happened. We do not know. No cosmetologist, no astrophysicist out there knows. There's a whole bunch of hypotheses what might have happened. But the singularity was hyper-ordered. As soon as it banged, it started going to disorder. What we now see in the universe is massive disorder after the hyper-ordered singularity. What this clown is saying is the exact opposite of what all of the world scientists have concluded and by direct demonstrable observation. But then, he's a creationist. Let me describe the system in terms of planet Earth. Our Earth is 93, 93 million miles away from the Sun. And the Bible says it's flat, by the way. And we're traveling through space at 60,000 miles per second. And the, at the equator, the equator is spinning round at 1,000 miles an hour. The Bible says it's flat, by the way. However, if we were 1% closer to the Sun, Earth is often 1% closer to the sun. It is often 1% farther from the sun. It is a variable that is elliptical orbit. Let's see where this clown is going. And it probably won't look pretty. We would all boil. If we were 1% further away, we would all freeze to death as one solid block of ice. Uh, no. Earth's orbit is slightly elliptical. That means that at its current eccentricity of 0 0.17, Earth's variation with a distance to the Sun is approximately 5 million kilometers. Earth's average temperature is dictated by Milankovitch cycles, that is, celestial mechanics, and Earth's greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. The variation between distances is almost insignificant. Earth, and I don't have to go into all the details, except to point out that the whole solar system is very carefully and intricately designed by a super scientist called Jesus Christ. Or it was created by Charles Manson. There is just as much evidence that Charles Manson created the universe and the solar system and humanity and all life in the universe than there is that somebody named Jesus Christ did that. Why not just say Charles Manson did it? 
Or blame it on Obama, because golly, he did everything, right? Very, very carefully, with literally millions and millions of interdependent parameters. Uh, no. Maybe five or six parameters from which everything else emerged. This is, by the way, a demonstrable fact. We know this. But the evolutionists like to break the rules of thermodynamics. Okay, give just one example of any evolutionist out there breaking the rules of thermodynamics. Just one. Good luck with that. The first and the second laws of thermodynamics. They like to say that with an explosion, things get, with an explosion, things get more organized. Uh, no. No scientist out there makes that assertion. Please name one. Have you ever seen an explosion? Have you seen a firework explode? Have you ever seen on, on a film? Have you ever seen an explosion? Have you ever seen something organized as a result of an explosion? Well, I'll tell you what, I haven't. I'll tell you what, no scientist says it happens. Golly! Have you ever heard of the word straw man? I have never heard of an explosion causing a, an, an organized universe. You have never heard it because no scientist has ever said that's how it happened. Oy, they. Now then, how did the gods do it? Let me tell you that the laws of entropy say that it's not possible to have an explosion to cause an, an organized universe. Okay, I give up. Please point to a organized universe. I'll wait. You will not find any organized universe anywhere in this one. I don't know about any universe in your head, but this universe, the universe that I'm familiar with, is hyper disordered. The universe that we currently exist in is not ordered, it is disordered. If you want to see an example of a ordered universe, look at whatever the hell the singularity was, after which the Big Bang disordered. And of course, by fun facts, this cultist means alternate facts. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.